Welcome to the Prepperverse. I'm Doc Jamo. Tonight we're going to be discussing or continuing our discussion uh, with the seven essential items you must have in your bug out bag. Um, in that video, I had gone over briefly the seven items uh, or things that you have to have consideration for in your bug out bag to make it effective. Um, in our last video, we talked about water. Okay, but the seven were um, water, fire, food, um, medical signaling, uh, navigation, and shelter. Okay, so we briefly discussed those. Now, what we're doing is taking each one of those and going just a little bit further, uh, just short of a demonstration, um, into each one of those. Like I said, the last video I did on water. Tonight we're doing fire. Oh, back on the water thing that I had discussed in that last video, I do want to make I do want to make a clarification. Um, when we're talking about weight of water having it in your pack, and I said that I knew a guy who in his bug out bag would carry a gallon jug of water, and I made uh, the comment that it was kind of too much. What I was thinking of is just with water, a gallon of water weighing eight pounds in your pack, that is one solid mass of water. Um, not that eight, not that a gallon of water is too much. It's just that too much in just one location. So if you're gonna carry a gallon of water, it's best to have them in different containers dispersed throughout your pack. So it's not throwing it off or you're not carrying too much in, in just one place. It's throwing the whole dynamics of your bug out bag off. So you could have it on either side of your pack. You can have a couple down in your pack and you're gonna go through it rather quickly. So it's not that a gallon of water is too much. Probably a good idea. Um, it's just having it just in one container. Um, if you have to, you have to, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but if you have a little bit of forethought, uh, just break up that water in different different places. And plus, if you get a hole in your jug, um, you don't lose all your water. You still have some that are around, so that's a, that's a consideration as well. So I just wanted to clarify that real quick. Fire. Okay. Um, there are many different ways, different techniques of creating fire. I don't claim to know it all. I just know a few. I know that works for me. It's kind of my solid go-to's. Um, I'm always interested in learning more about that because there are certainly uh, a lot of techniques uh, that I'm not aware of that I would love to learn. So if you know of any uh, that I don't really discuss on this, please uh, comment. Let me know. I, I want to learn these things. But three basic methods, um, and there's more, but the three basic methods are friction, solar concentration, and electrical. And we're just going to discuss those real quick. Um, first of all, friction matches um, our friction. And what I like to do is I like to kind of, um, there goes another plane. Um, start, I, there's certain things I really don't want to rely upon. I really don't want to rely upon carrying um, flammable fluid, unless it's Unless I'm, that's my fuel of choice for cooking. Um, I'd rather cook over fire. Uh, sometimes if I go on ultralight backpacking trips, then I may carry some like heat, whatever, and uh, cook over just a little homemade stove that I, that I make. Um, but as far as uh, fire creation, I wanna rely on something uh, that's a little bit easier, I think. A little bit more dependable. Um, so, matches uh, are, are friction. Now there's nothing wrong with matches. If you're gonna use matches, use, I like the, uh, the Strike Anywhere matches, one, you know, ones with the white tip. Um, and I usually will uh, get like a, have one here, uh, a prescription bottle. You get your Strike Anywhere matches. I take them out of the box, I throw them in there, but I will take and cut out the section that you, the striking, part of the box and just throw it in here so it makes it easier put it in this it's watertight and you've got more um thing about matches those is they run out so you got to have another uh way to create um fire 
an interesting uh, thing about matches as I went on to an iron biking um, exercise uh, in the Ozarks with uh, biking preparedness. Learned a lot, learned a lot on that, on that trip. But anyway, um, it was a task rewards type thing. But we were out in the middle of nowhere, just given just a few things, no watch, no cell phone, no electronics. All we had was a two liter bottle of water, a knife, and a little piece of visqueen, and that was it. Um, oh, and a pack of matches. And we had the first task was to create a fire and have it going for about 15 minutes. So, and I, at this time, I had pretty good at starting fires. So, when I got the pack of matches, um, I opened it up and there was only five. He took out all the rest, just left five. And it was very interesting because you get to see how your mind plays tricks on you. And we had no food and we're out here for four days. Okay, we have no food and this is day one. And it's starting to get cold. So a fire would actually feel pretty good. So I have to make this work. So to make a long story short, I went through four matches. I'm on my last one. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I was so nervous and it just made stupid mistakes. Got it going on that last match. If I didn't have that last match, I'd have to try and rely on uh, something else. So it's good to have uh, different ways of creating um, creating fire. Just another tool in your tool bag or your toolbox, if you will, that you, that you can pull out. So um, matches are, are friction. And if you use matches, you could, um, one of the things I like using uh, with matches is, you know, if you're gonna use it, I like, because it increases your chances of getting a fire going, is, and you may have heard some, heard of this, uh, cotton impregnated, Vaseline impregnated gauze. Uh, this is just a cotton ball that I had gotten. And um, you just get a little bit of Vaseline, work it in there, and then just put it, you know, I'd make a bunch of them and just put them in here and, you know, keep it uh, dry and clean. And then when you go to use it, just pull out a little bit and uh, you could use a match. Or what I like using a lot, which is probably my main thing, is the ferrocerium rod and striker. Um, this will catch a spark really, really well. And the ferrocerium rod and striker, I just have the Boy Scout ones. They're cheap. You get them at Cabela's. And this is your rod, and then you have a, a little striker that you can just kind of, you know, do that, and you create sparks, and it catches uh, sparks pretty well. Um, char cloth is another good uh, component that you can use to catch a spark with. And I like to make my own char cloth. I learned this um, many years ago, and uh, I just made a container and I'll just talk you through it real quick. Um, this container is just a metal container and what it is, it's one of those uh, pellet gun BB or pellet canisters that you know you go to uh, Walmart and um, get them for your air rifle. And I just dumped them out and you get a cotton shirt, a clean cotton shirt that you don't use anymore and you kind of cut it into circles is what I did. I cut a bunch of little circles out of the, um, the cotton t-shirt and you just pack it into this container. Now the container, you want to be relatively sturdy um, because there are some containers out there that are a little bit more flimsy. And this is one, I don't know if you could tell, but it's just not, I think that you want it sturdy because you're gonna throw it in the fire. Um, this one, I don't know how well, this is pretty flimsy. I don't know how well it would withstand, uh, the fire. And this is just a, um, a beard balm type container. Uh, though I do have another beard balm, uh, container, which when this one goes out, I'll probably use this one because this one's about as sturdy as this one. So this is really good. So. For any of you that um, have beards, if you use Beard Balm, um, 
I just get this off of Amazon. It's uh, gray before shave. Uh, beer bomb works real well. I like it. Um, and ladies out there, if your husband has a beard, maybe you can snag one from, <laughs> from him when he's done. Don't throw it away. It's a good resource uh, to use. Well, anyway, what you do is you, you put a hole in the top. And after you have your fire going and you put your, your gauze or your... Uh, your cotton circles in there. And then you just kind of close it up and you throw it in the fire. I'm gonna pull a couple things out because I'm gonna show you. Char cloth actually looks like this. This used to be a white cotton shirt, okay? So anyway, I had cut it in circles, jammed them all in there, tightened it up, and I, of course I have the, the hole there. You throw it in the fire for about 10 minutes, whatever, you'll see it start smoking. Um, you'll start seeing up and then smoke will start pouring out. Once this, uh, the smoke starts to lessen, um, starts to taper off a little bit, I take it out of the fire. And then beforehand, I find just a little stick. This is just a, like a little twig. Then I'll just go ahead and plug it. Plug that in like that and just block that hole. And what that's doing, just blocking the oxygen from, from getting out. And you take it and you just let it sit and just let it cool down. And what it's what it does is just creates that you know you're, all that cotton is now charred so what you can do with that is get you a little piece like this and you can i have a little paper clip that i keep in there as well and take a little piece and you know spear it on there and then i could use a ferrocerium rod to um catch a spark on that and it'll continue it's like a mantle in one of those um you know those coleman lanterns the old mantles that you have to tie in there and then you have to like prime it or whatever it's kind of like that and then you can uh with that spark you can create you know your um ignite your tinder tinder pile so it's a very good method uh to use and and i'll demonstrate this uh in the future but it's really neat because a bunch of them in there and you're good to go there's another way, uh, friction, that I have tried. I'm not a huge fan of because it never really worked for me. I think maybe once that I actually was satisfied with the way that it worked. Um, but you've probably seen them. It's these uh, magnesium blocks and it has a little ferrocerium rod uh, along the edge, you know, to create the spark. But the issue that I was having with, and I tried different things, was, you know, I use a knife and you just kind of scrape off um, that magnesium, because you want to try and scrape off about a dime size, uh, worth to get the, you know, then you strike it and it catches super easy and it burns really hot. Um, but I've ruined the knife <laughs> edges on mine, on my knife, trying to get this and, um, tried using the back and it didn't work so well. And then I, somebody told me just use a hacksaw blade. So I got a hacksaw blade, put some type tape around it, kind of made it and that worked some, um, but I never really had good luck with it. Maybe somebody else has, uh, but that's another another option and it'll take a while to go to go through that. So, but I carry it just in case um, somebody has a different method, but with the char cloth, okay, so that's, that's uh, max matches, you know, it's friction. Oh, there's one thing you need to look up too. I do not have one, but it'd be really good. I'm gonna get one is a fire piston. It's kind of like a, a friction thing. I had a really good friend of mine tell me about it and he uh, loved it and it works well. And it's just a way to create an ember. And once you have an ember, um, you can do a lot with that and you can protect it and carry it and hold on to it. Uh, it's pretty interesting how that goes. Um, but with the char cloth, you could use that ferrocerium rod or what I like to use is either a magnifying glass. So now we're talking about solar concentration. A magnifying glass, um, you just hold it and that will create a little uh it'll ignite that uh char cloth and um the bottom of a coke can or a pepsi can if you've seen it um and i've done this several times and it actually does work uh the bottom how it's concaved you get like a snickers bar or sand and spit or whatever and just polish it up as much as you can and then you can angle it you know aim it at the sun provided you have sun um and solar concentration and just kind of aim it and you want that to aim it just right and it'll ignite that uh that char cloth 
So that, that's a, another way that you can do that. So let me see. You have the bottom of the soda clan, um, magnifying glass, solar concentration. Okay, electrical. Uh, this is a very easy way to do, and just another uh, another tool for the tool bag is um, steel wool and a nine volt battery. If you put the two together, you know, kind of fray out the steel wool a little bit, and some of you may have done this already, and you just touch that nine volt battery to the steel wool, and you'll see it. It'll it'll light up. And if you hold it on there and make sure you have your tinder around it. Um, ready to go to catch it'll light up so that's another way uh that you can do um that works pretty well it works pretty well so anyway that's all i have for tonight and um if you have any other ideas i'm more you know i'm i look at them i like trying different things so uh, hopefully this has been a little bit of a value to you uh, if it has, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, definitely helps out the channel and hit the thumbs up. Uh, give it a like. And um, yes, I believe we will talk to you later.